This video is the genesis, the ground zero, the jumping off point for a long running series of tutorials around controllers and the software programs that make them stimulated. I'm starting with Gamepad Tester because it's freakishly easy to use and all the programs I'm going to be showing you how to use in the future, such as DS4 and Rewazd, they're all going to rely on Gamepad Tester to double check their work and make sure that we're making our controller better, not worse. Also, it is by far the simplest program to understand and use. There's virtually zero learning curve and you don't even have to install a program because it's a website. If you yourself are a top dog, mega meat hoss, controller swang and gamepad bad boy, I might actually penetrate that rough exterior layer of yours and teach you a thing or two that you didn't know about gamepad tester. Let's dive right in. Swim caps and ear putty. Let's into the deep end. This is your controller captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller captain out. The first thing to note, as of recent, actually this week, Gamepad Tester is now part of a larger suite called Hardware Tester. It's one of four pieces, a GPU tester. Yes, indeed. Yep, that's what I've got in this rig, a microphone tester, nice visual representation of that soothing sensual voice. <laughs> And then over here, you got a MIDI keyboard. If you're inside of a DAW or digital audio workstation and you're laying down fat beats inside of Fruity Loops or Reasons or Pro Tools, Gamepad Tester is a very simple to understand and use diagnostic tool that'll give you a visual representation of what's going on with your thumbsticks as well as all the buttons on your controller. Guess what? There's something like that built into Windows 10 and 11 PCs. Let me show you so you know I'm not blowing smoke up your patooties. There's a couple ways to get that. The easiest way to stroke the Windows key on your keyboard and type in, why did I say stroke? Just tap it. Type in the word control controller, the first result is going to be set up a USB gamepad. Plug in a gamepad to your PC with a USB-C or maybe a micro USB cable. Maybe it's an older gamepad. Now, if you click on properties, it's going to give you a visual representation very similar to what we get on Gamepad Tester. However, Gamepad Tester is this on steroids. If you're a developer looking for the Gamepad API, there is a quick guide. This FAQ mentions inconsistency amongst different browsers. I have used Gamepad Tester in several browsers, including Firefox, Chrome, and Edge, and I've had no issues, but my my usual daily driver browser is Chrome and it seems to work great with that. How many controllers can you set up and read in Gamepad Tester? Well, you can set up multiple gamepads is what it quotes here, but you're only going to have a visual representation for four. However, the first controller usually takes up these first two slots. If it doesn't, you can get up to four controllers on here and it just works in real time where you can tab between them while you're moving the thumbsticks and it'll show you what each controller is doing. Now over here in top controller, by no means are there 12 million people using this application with a generic Xbox 360 controller, what I need to specify is that most controllers that are plugged into a Windows 10 or 11 PC are going to automatically force compatibility as a 360 controller because that will have the most compatibility with the most games and most launchers. You're going to see in parentheses X input standard as that has taken over D input as the golden standard for communication protocol between controllers and PCs. I'm trying to word all this extremely simple because it really is at the end of the day, but just because this is ranked number one, these are a multitude of different controllers. For example, I just plugged in an Xbox Series controller. Guess what it's going to be read as? An Xbox 360 controller. X input. Standard gamepad. And this is exactly what I mentioned earlier, that player one and player two slots are going to be taken up by the same controller. As this is a full diagnostic suite, you can click down the vibration button and it will rattle your gamepad's rumble force motors. By squeezing down the triggers, that is going to be linear B6 and B7. Depending on how hard I squeeze the triggers, it is reflected. And every single face button, D-pad, even clicking down on the thumbsticks is going to be a button in here so you can test to make sure that it's not broken to high hell. But 90% of the time when I open up this application or website, I should say, what I'm looking at is the thumbsticks over here. The first thing I look for is stick drift. The further these dots are walking away from the center of this crosshair, the higher the chance of you having stick drift in game is. As I mentioned in my stick drift guide, it's a fine balance between having the tightest dead zones to where as soon as you provide input on those thumbsticks, you're walking and aiming on screen. But when you take your thumbs off, your character completely ceases movement. Now what you're looking for, the standard that you're basing the resting value on, the value that you're looking to like and to see here is going to be one of these two numbers I'm about to give you, 0 0.00002 or 0 0.00392. These are incredibly common resting values for potentiometer thumbstick 
modules, as well as those new Hall Effect anti-stick drift thumbstick modules that all the kids are talking about. But as you can see, as I move these thumbsticks back and forth and then I stop, those dogs are wandering the yard because they're not on a tight leash. But luckily this controller doesn't have in-game stick drift as I was just playing with it on PC with the dead zones tightened up pretty taut like in the in-game settings and I had no issue. But again, I'd like to see one of those two resting values that I mentioned earlier. That's what you're looking for. Now I'm going to show you how to run a circularity test, which is going to give us our thumbstick accuracy under the diagnostic section. Tick this little box and it tells you what to do. Go ahead and spin those joysticks slowly to test. So going counterclockwise, doesn't matter which direction you go. Now, just like golf, lower number better here. In fact, average error of 0.0, .0 would be the best. I've never seen that. Not with magnetic hull effect thumbsticks, not with potentiometer thumbstick modules. The best results I've ever seen is around the 1%. <laughs> Out of breath, 1% average error rate, which is incredibly low. Those thumbsticks are freakishly accurate, meaning as soon as you provide input, they're going right where you tell them to. Love that. And just to give you a real world scenario showing you what I would use gamepad tester for, this is a stock DualSense controller. It's showing a 0.00392 resting value on these thumbsticks. Great. That, that's cool for a stalker. Let's go ahead and run DS4 windows in the background and tauten them up just a little bit more. Kevin, that looks like a hella confusing program. It's not. And there's going to be an in-depth guide just like this video in the near future for DS4 windows. Subscribe so you don't miss that. And with a little bit of tweaking inside of DS4 windows, we now have a tighter resting value and better accuracy in the circularity test. The very last little pro tip or bro tip, if you will, is the fact you do not need to be wired or tethered in Gamepad Tester. You can be connected via Bluetooth or the 2.4 gigahertz dongle that comes with a generic gamepad or the Xbox wireless adapter for Windows. And those will work, although I do strongly recommend against them. Anytime you're doing any kind of overclocking, diagnostic work on a controller, tweakage of settings, I do recommend going wired as you are going to have the best and most consistent connection. Hopefully the short tutorial showed you how to use Gamepad Tester because we're going to be using it a lot in the near future as we dick with DS4 Windows, Rewaz, and a bunch of other controller black magic voodoo cauldrons. The slickness and the sickness coming in the near future, so subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll see you stallions and stallionettes in the next one. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my video and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes. Most of the time. Peace.